In this video, we're going to show you how to export a part file in Fusion and then put it into our 3D print Dremel online to send it to the 3D printer. First thing I'm going to do is select which one I want, one of these corner blocks. Uh, let's just select this one for example since it's the first one. And so I'm going to activate the component. And then as easy as it is from there, we're just going to right click it and save as mesh. I'm going to make sure it's STL binary, <coughs> the top one, and it's saved in millimeters. That's what the 3D printer reads in. That it's one file, refinement is high, pretty simple to have that. And once you do it once, the next time it'll show up that way. I'm going to click OK, and I'm just going to save it in my downloads on my computer. And the reason is because, you know, I'm just going to use it just for 3D printing purposes. So what I'd like to do then is probably put my name on it. Uh, so we know it's whose it is uh, when it starts printing. So I'm going to put my last name on it there. You can do the same. Uh, maybe your initials or uh, your team's uh, initials, something like that, so you know whose it is. And I'm just going to click Save. Now I'm going to jump now to my 3D print uh, online, which is the printcloud.dremel.com. And it's as easy as uploading a new one. And now you can do multiple files at once, and I will show you that. Um, but in this one, we're just going to do one at a time. So I'm going to click Choose File. And it should take me right to my downloads. If it doesn't, go locate that. And then I'm going to click Open. I'm going to save and go to my files. <coughs> and we'll know it already loaded up as an STL file. And <coughs> we're going to go ahead and click Layout. It does say Repair. Um, a repair is maybe if it reorients the part. So, but you know what? Let's try that. So, step one, step two, step three, pretty simple. So, I'm going to click repair first. This is called magic fix. It moves the object to the center, it rotates it, and then it auto resizes it for printing. So, your printers uh, you'll have are the 3D40, that's one through three, and the 3D45, that's all the way with the one in the back with the glass plate. Um, so, we'll just go ahead, and they're both the same size. Uh, and so, um, that, that's uh, what we have. Now, I, one thing I don't want to check is auto resize for printing. I don't want to auto resize for printing because I want the exact size that I need. All right? So I'm going to say fix and we'll see what happens. After it fixes it, if I close, it takes me to my project. And there it is. There's the one that's repaired. Uh, it looks like it didn't do anything, which happens most of the time, okay? Um, unless it's an odd part. And so this one's pretty simple. So I'm going to click layout, step two. And there is the size of my block, and I'm just going to rotate it, okay? I need to have it th this part be the flat part, so I'm going to rotate it, and I can just click these plus or minus 90s on the X value to rotate it around, and now it's flat. I'm always going to put it on bed to make sure that it's flat on the bed. I think it is, but that's just one thing to do. And now, now you can see, if I zoom in and out, uh, how it's going to actually print. To rotate, I... I right click the mouse to rotate it around and we can see how this is going to work here all right so that's perfectly in the center which prints uh, most of the time maybe uh, I want to move it uh, I can move it off to the right uh, or the left uh, I'm just going to put it right there because it really doesn't matter on the print bed and now we are ready to go if I were to want to add another file I can do that like so I wanted to print two of my blocks at the same time or three or four, I can do that right here by adding another file. It has to be uploaded first, but then I can do that. It will take me to my files, okay? I don't have any files from the single files uh, there, but if I did, they would show up. All right, so I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna save and slice. So here are some of our settings. Um, this is just a standard setting, very simple to do that. Um, what we want to have ch unchecked though is supports. We don't need any supports and we don't need a raft either. And I put it off to the left, so I'm not going to recenter it. So all these not checked, okay? The layer height, there is nothing special about this, no de really intricate detail. So I'm going to ramp it up to uh, the standard draft and, and best. Uh, if I go to draft, we'll see that the layer height goes all the way up to 0.3. I, I usually don't do an infill density less than 10%, um, so I'll, I'll keep it there. 
and the number of perimeters um, we can leave as two. It says weak to strong. It doesn't need to be, it's not hopefully contacting with too much, so this should be pretty simple to have this. So draft 0.32, um, that will show up just like this. If I go to the advanced tab, you can actually see a lot more things going on here. All right, still gives us the layer height and things like that. Um, it has supports that already checked, even though I unchecked it before. So um, we don't really need to mess with too many things at this advanced tab. Um, but uh, since we're on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how we would do that from advanced tab. I'm not gonna do any supports, like we said. The skirt, I'm just gonna make that instead of seven, I'm gonna just make it two. The layer height still 0.3 uh, perimeters, infill density. Uh, I'm not gonna recenter it like we talked about. And then the print speed, I'm actually gonna ramp up the print speed to 60 millimeters a second. So that should go a little faster, which is good. And then making sure that I collect the correct, the correct printer type selected here. So this is a 3D40. And I'm going to go ahead and click slice and tool path preview. All right, tool path pre preview is really cool. I'm gonna zoom out here and I'm gonna show you, I can drag this range and it'll show me every layer that it does. And we can see that the first layer touches the build plate. That's what I want, so that's great. So the first layer touches the build plate and then it goes all the way up, like so. All the way to the top. So it looks great. Uh, I'm ready to go, all right? I'm actually going to close it for now just to show you one other thing. And what I wanna show you is it's ready to go, it's right here, and I can just build it, print the model. Um, but I'm gonna go to printers up here. And if we're accepted here, we should see all of our printers <clears throat> on here. And you can see what's printing. There is nothing printing right now. Nothing is actually printing right now. So I can send it to any one of these printers, number one, number two, number three, and I can go back there and look what color maybe I want. If there was a bunch of things printing or in the queue, you would see them here. So this is where you'd want to go before you print something. Maybe the first thing before you even set it up. Back to my projects. And that top project there, I'm ready to print it. So I'm gonna go to build. And we're gonna select the printers. And what you guys will probably see is only Q. So I'm gonna queue this up. Let's just say it's number one. I can click Q where number one is. And the request has been submitted. And pending approval from your teacher to print it. And that's it. Now it's sent to the printer. And it should start printing soon.